Now, there was also uh, another, uh, perhaps uh, more popular uh, series of films, um, which similarly used the Mao suit as what I'm gonna sort of call like a shorthand for evil. And this is of course the James Bond films. As we all know, I think the James Bond films were based on books by British author um, Ian Fleming and starred a British hero, although actually most analysis of the films has positioned them within the context of the Cold War in which Bond is fighting for or legitimizing um, American values. However, I think it's worth noting that while James Bond as the hero represented Western or even American interests, the villains were not so clearly nationalized. The main enemy for much of the 1960s and 70s was um, Spectre, the special executive for counterintelligence, terrorism, revenge, and extortion, a shadowy um, corporation. Many of the villains appeared to be from the Soviet Union or Eastern Europe, but they were not necessarily representing um, communist governments in those territories. And on a number of occasions, Bond works with the Soviet representatives to fight against Spectre. Uh, and Spectre would attack both the Soviet Union and communist China in different films. So the world of James Bond is very clearly classified in, um, uh, in sort of these binary terms of good versus evil, but these values were not necessarily mapped um, quite so precisely onto West versus East um, or even capitalist versus communist. And it's significant then that the main leader of Spectre, um, Blofeld, typically were, wears a, a Mao suit um, or something similar to a Mao suit. Um, and in one particularly interesting uh, scene, uh, in Diamonds Are Forever, uh, it transpires that Blofeld had used plastic surgery to create a series of doppelgangers, um, and Bond might, must fight against a series of identical Blofeld lookalikes. This proliferation of Mao-suited villains recalls and reinforces the Cold War conception of identical Chinese ants. Blofeld is very clearly not Chinese, but within the transnational or perhaps even denationalized space of Spectre, a corporation run without recourse to human values and dedicated only to power, Blofeld's Mao suit can be seen to draw on already existing ideas about the Chinese, represented through their characteristic clothing as representing the antithesis to Western values. So um, in kind of conclusion of this section, Mao's China was repeatedly constructed in the British mainstream media as embodying dehumanizing totalitarian evil. This was constructed visually, including through reference to the Mao suit as embodying both the perceived conformity of Chinese society and China's rejection of the norms of international political and social discourse. While, however, these may have been the kind of dominant positions on China, they were by no means the only ones. And indeed, in the same areas in which China was seen as a threat, its revolutionary nature and its refusal to adhere to established political or socioeconomic norms were also the areas uh, in which uh, China was celebrated by its supporters. And for those sympathetic to China uh, in Britain, the country was doubly maligned both in the antagonism of the US or the West uh, and the resulting kind of hot periods of war uh, in East Asia, but also in the vilification of China by much of the global left following the Sino-Soviet split of the early 1960s. 